Hi, I'm DG Dino from Jinxter Games, and this tutorial is about how you can make a field of view setup. First of all, I have to thank this guy, Sebastian Lagu. Uh, I'm not sure if I uh, pronounced his name right, but uh, I'm sorry for that. And um, he made this field of view visualization uh, in C Sharp for Unity. And I took a lot of parts from this and made this in Playmaker. It's a little bit different than his system, but uh, the result is about the same. Um, he made also this um, editor um, script, so you can see these lines. And I made also one for this. So uh, let's get started. First of all, I have my character here, and you can see there is no, there is only this collider, and I have to drop in this uh, script, and now you can see there is a white circle going around, which means that uh, this is the radius. Um, to adjust the radius, you just adjust the sphere collider, and for the angle. You can do this here, but this is only a visualization, it's not the real angle yet. If you want um, this to work inside the script or inside uh, Playmaker, you'll have to drop in this one. So, or if you want in another FSM, because you can also use this for enemies. Um, so, drop this um, FSM drop it here and you can see it's still not connected it should be connected here and so what we have to do is type in the name here and as you could see it's changed and now it's connected here so now you have the actual target uh, location Okay, let's look into our actions. First of all, we're going to go to this FSM and um, check my player movement. So I have here a get mouse position and this is a custom action which you can get from the ecosystem. The next one is a screen to world point. So I'm getting my position here. And then I'm placing this here in the screen vector. And then I'm storing the world vector. And I'm doing this every frame with all the actions actually here. So the next thing I have here is look at. So I will be looking at this world position. So if I go here, my character will look to my mouse here. And go around okay uh, I have keep vertical on and a debug line so you can see it in the scene and then the next one is get axis I have it multiplied by three that just depends on what speed you want and uh, so for horizontal and vertical just to move my character so and then I have for X, I use my horizontal movement, and then for Z, I'm using this vertical movement in world space. Okay, let's check the targets FSM. The first action you can see here is set sphere collider radius. And the thing what this does, it just set the radius here on the sphere. And um, this can be useful uh, to do in runtime if you have like a power up or something so then you can have a bigger site or if your flame is almost finished and then it gets smaller because you can't see much anymore. And next I have two trigger events, one with on trigger enter and one uh, on trigger exit. Uh, I have my collider tag set to targets as my targets have a collider tag. So I'm only getting the targets and I'm not getting 
the walls or floor or anything okay then i have a send event so add target and here a remove target so on enter i'm gonna add and on exit i'm gonna remove and i'm storing the target that has entered or exited then if a target has entered i'm gonna add this to this array so um this is my targets array uh, set to game object and size is uh, zero from the start then if i'm gonna remove a target so if i'm trigger exit then i'm checking if the array contains and then i'm gonna delete from that index so on the targets list i'm gonna check this target value and the result i get in the index then the index i use to remove the item from the list okay let's look now to the check angle fsm first i have a next frame event here and this is just for looping so i'm gonna loop this every frame um if i put this on an enemy i tend to use a weight uh, as an enemy doesn't always have to um, react exactly on every frame so i could check this like uh, 0 0.05 or like 0 0.2 seconds or even half a second and the big difference is that uh, i need to check this way less so uh, this is good for performance but if you use this on a player i tend to use every frame because yeah i want to react quickly so on players uh, you should use next frame and on enemies you can use a weight okay next we have this get fsm array so i'm getting the fsm from check targets oh, and here we have check targets so i'm getting this variable so when i'm adding some stuff i have some something inside and i'm just copying it to these targets uh, so it's the same name uh, uh, it's more clear for me if if i use the same names but you can use also a different name if you want to it's up to you so i'm just copying the values and then i'm going here to the array get next two um, i'm using a custom a action array get next two because this has the uh, reset flag um, on the standard one you don't have this and for what this is is um, when you are looping so and halfway you're gonna send this event uh, the loop is not finished and when I send this event I want to start this over I don't want to continue so if I wouldn't have this reset flag it will go here and then it would continue and stop in the end so the the ones that uh, on from the start from the list are not checked anymore so then i have this reset flag and so what i do here if i recheck i'm gonna set this reset bool to true then here this action is gonna see oh this is true so i need to uh, reset so then it's going to start over from the beginning and also it automatically going to set this back to false so you don't need to have another um, action to set it to false again it does this automatically and that's why i use this array get next too further it works the same as the standard one so how this works is you're going to start from index zero or from the index that you have put in here and it's going to end on the index you have ended uh, or on the index that you have set or if both is set to zero it's going to just start from index zero until the end and then when everything is done it's going to send a done event 
So next, um, each in each loop, this is gonna happen. So I get the first item, then I do what I have to do here, go back and then do this again with the next item and the next item and the next item until all is done. Okay. Now what I'm doing here is I'm getting the angle to target. So I'm getting the angle from use owner. So that's my character to the target object. So I'm going to get the angle here to these targets. Only those that are within this circle that are inside that array list. So, okay. After I got this angle, I'm using a float operator on my view angle. So that's the one I have set up for the angle that I'm, I want to use, as you can see here. So it depends on how I've set this up. And I'm going to divide this by two. So I only want half from this, from the value from that. Then I have, so my float operator, oh, I think, let me see. So get angle, yeah, view angle, and I store this in the view angle divided. Then I have my target angle here. So which I got here from get angle to target. So, and I'm going to compare this to the view angle divided. Then if it's less than it's going to be inside. If it's greater than it's going to be outside. I important also, I put here an action sequence. So just to be sure that they are not started at the same time. Um, normally it should work, but I just tend to do this just to be sure. Okay, so when it's outside, it's just gonna set this material to blue. So, and then it's gonna go back here and get the next one and do this loop again. Now, if it's inside, um, I want to check if there is a wall in between. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the distance. So I'm getting the dis distance from my uh, character until this object. Only, again, only those that are within the circle. Then I use this target distance for the raycast here. And raycast uh, 2 is also a custom action. Uh, I use this because I need this no hit event. And the standard one doesn't have a no hit. So if it's not hitting anything, you can't go to the next state or anything. So that's why I use this one. Uh, all the rest, I think is the same. Um, maybe this is added. I'm not sure, but anyway, uh, so I'm doing the raycast from my character and I'm sending this to the target. So I'm doing the raycast to this one here and it's only sending until here, not going further here as I ha got this distance. So that should be until here exactly. Okay. Then uh, my hit events is wall hit and no hit. And um, so I'm using layer masks to uh, check these elements. So for walls and uh, let me show you. So I, my wall has a layer wall. So you can add more things in it, or you could invert this and uh, set this to target, I think. And mm, then that would work also, I'm not sure. Anyway, I have now wall. So if it's hitting a wall, uh, be, then it's gonna say wall hit, and it's also gonna set this target again to blue and go to the next one. And if nothing was hit, it, it means that uh, the target is in line of sight and then it's just gonna set the material to red. Whew. Okay, now uh, I think that we got everything covered now. So let's try this out and hope that it works. So as you can see, I can 
turn around, look around, and if I look to the uh, enemies through the wall, nothing happens. But if there is no wall, everything works fine. And well, this is a way that you can make this um, field of view. Um, for visualization, so uh, this guy from the from this tutorial has a visualization also made. I haven't made this yet, and maybe I'm gonna make it, maybe not. And I'm gonna see if I can make time for it. Thank you for watching. If you like the tutorial, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can support my work by becoming a patron at Patreon or donate me with PayPal or purchase my assets on the asset store. You can find the links in the descriptions below.